we are leaving that all behind so that way we can live in the god perspective think about mercury mercury is the messenger of the gods we are the messenger of god hey what's up everyone this is ashley welcome back to fd 1111 ministries this reading is for the super solar gemini eclipse reading so if you want to skip ahead to the angel pick a pile reading you can find that listed up here if you want to read the blog post that will be listed in the description box and if you want to check out the overall energy for the month of june you can find that reading right here it's a channel message so i go over the ruling cards that i picked as well as other like channel messages it does include astrology tarot and prophecy once again let me also say this that i do channel information depending on the energy the most prominent energy that comes through so with this eclipse one of the things that i wanted to first go over is a little bit about the cards that i picked out and i didn't pick them out like i just went through and picked them out like that but one of the first cards that we had here we have the empress card and i feel like with this empress card that money abundance and i even hear knowledge a plethora of knowledge that will be the focal point for many of those in the collective. For the overall energy of June was the Three of Swords and the Five of Swords. I feel like with this energy is like leaving a lot of the BS behind, leaving a lot of, I hear the chaffed behind. So this is a, um, a parable from the New Testament where um, it's almost like a farmer and you know how you pick up wheat and they take it to the threshing floor and the threshing floor was a place where you would separate the wheat from the chaff. The chaff is like the unedible, unusable parts of the wheat. So this is what's happening. You're separating the wheat from the chaff. If you see the five of swords, you have a gentleman that's holding some swords but there's two other individuals that are walking away with the other swords on the ground so with those swords is like possibly a debacle or a falling out or this could have been a group of friends or family members that were once on the same accord on the, on the same accord they like talked alike they hung out you know did all the same things alike they thought alike but however this person right here in the forefront that he has decided to take a higher path. He has decided to take a different path. Not saying who is right or who is wrong. That's one thing that we're learning, especially with the three of swords, is that everybody could be right in a situation. We just may have to go our separate ways, or you may have a different perspective than I do, but guess what? We could still get along. So whatever that case may be, this could be someone leaving those energies behind, but still having the same connections and relationships, especially with this Empress card here. This could be people that are literally separating for a period of time, or this could be people coming back to finish off what they started, especially with Mercury in retrograde that went retrograde on the 29th of May and will remain there until the 22nd of June. So this could play out over that time period, but however, regardless if a person comes back or a situation that may show up to test you, that the overall message is right now to take this opportunity to rethink things through, not to be so quick to act. These could be people that were very rash to act out, to say something, to have a sharp tongue that could leave a three of swords type of energy but we have to go and we have to think, we gotta go within, take the hermit mode and really think and really look at things from everyone's perspective. Was what I said or what I did righteous? Meaning, was that really in alignment with my true character? Was I holding back or was I acting out of anger? What will I think, What? how would I handle the situation if I could do it differently now? Would I still do the same thing and why? You know, really asking yourself questions. This could be a person that's really sitting back and especially here with the nine of swords, sitting back and asking themselves, did I make the right decision? Could I have handled things differently? How would I do it if I had the opportunity to do it? Would I do the same thing? If that's the case, then everything's all good. If not, let me go and think about how to best handle the situation if I had another opportunity. This Gemini new moon happens at 19 degrees of Gemini. And not only is it a new moon, but it's also a solar eclipse. So solar energy deals with the consciousness. It deals with the father, it deals with the masculine, but it also deals with more public figures 
or the projection of the public figure. Now, I say that is like what we see on media is only one thing, but behind the curtain, it could be another thing. Same thing with ourselves. What projection am I putting out there? What do people see? Is that the real me? Or am I putting on a projection of what I think people want to see? Now, that's one thing that we can really dive into deep, deeply into during this solar eclipse. Another thing to keep in mind is that the moon, the sun, and Mercury are all in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini is in the north node. Things can be highly agitated. Things could be brought to the surface. How is our attitude going to be? Do we really know how we're going to react if somebody says this? I feel like this is a time to prepare ourselves for different forms of communication, different ways of how to have the God perspective. And that God perspective is little G God, like having a, um, a higher perspective, like an angelic perspective. And that comes from that Sagittarius energy that came through with the Sagittarius eclipse. That was one of the messages, having that God perspective, leaving a lot of that human drudge, I hear like, it's like the sludge, this judgment, the projections onto other people, that toxic energy, those energy vampires, that type of energy that can drag people down and have them living in captivity. We are leaving that all behind. So that way we can live in the God perspective. Think about Mercury. Mercury is the messenger of the gods. We are the messenger of God. We are the messenger of the higher expression of ourselves too. So think about that. Think about if I'm leaving my human rational rationale, my human understanding, um, my human judgment of others and of myself behind, I'm opening myself up for that higher expression of myself. The Sabian symbol for the 19th degree of this eclipse of Gemini is the large archaic value reveals a traditional wisdom. Now, one thing I pointed out in the blog post is like that sometimes, especially if you're going through an awakening process or you recently have went through one, we are always awakening one thing. We are always transforming. We should be on that journey of transforming, always learning about ourselves, learning about truth. But one thing, and I find this to be true with my clients as well as with myself, is when I started to go through a real awakening, leaving a lot of the religious stuff behind, I found myself almost being like angry because I did not grow up learning this or I grew up being held back in this aspect. Or if only my upbringing was this way or that way, that I would be in a better position or I would have this type of knowledge. I run across people like that quite frequently where they are um, upset because they may have grown up a certain way and they didn't have the knowledge that they have acquired in the present moment. But one thing that we have to remember is that God is the divine is in everything, in all forms of truth. When you get to that God perspective, you see that everything works out in a grand design. You were meant to be born in a specific time, in a specific location, with a specific family and belief um, and everything like that because of the fact that you can relate to other people, that you have a special calling on your life that may not be like others. We cannot compare ourselves to others. Option A, we have peace, Archangel Shamuel. Peace comes from remembering that only love is real. All right, let's slide out some of your cards here. Be true to you. That's the impetus, that is the beginning of true, unconditional love. If we are able to accept ourselves, and trust ourselves, I specifically here with your pal, that we're able to express the highest form of energy that is through love, the portal of love. Talk to your angels. Instead of worrying, ask for divine guidance. Take time to breathe out. 
you know, that really helps with um, activating and living in peace and truth and understanding. I would find just recently, I really noticed this, that when I would get really in a mode of focus, that I would sort of kind of clench my body up and hold my breath a little bit. I'm not breathing. I would still breathe, but not breathing fully, like taking a good, nice, deep belly breath in and holding and excelling it because I would be so focused. And sometimes even like when um, I'm in that mode and I get bothered or or a noise or something, you know, just anything that can come into your space that can interrupt that flow state. But sometimes, um, or either if we get upset or we get angry, we may hold our breath, but the breath is the, is the impetus or is the, the energy of life. If we are holding back breath and love. And so I pause because I hear like breath and love is the same thing. It's like a exchange. As we take love and breath into our bodies, then we're giving it back. The law of respirosity. We have here the four of cups. And I hear stillness specifically with that stillness, being still, allowing, allowing that love to come in and also giving it back freely, openly unconditional love without conditions the spirit will let you know how to love um, your guides will help guide you through a navigation of love <laughs> the high priestess the high priestess knows she is still on the traditional tarot card you have the beautiful holy spirit the the the, the shakana sitting there on the throne between the two pillars of consciousness, Boaz and Yakin, that is give and take. That is, once again, the law of respirosity. And this card came out in the other deck for the overall June reading, the energy reading that channeled information. And I feel like someone could be working or operating out of the lower understanding of love. And they have been pricked. They have been hurt. They have been hindered from the expression of love. This card and this card is from um, one of my soul sisters. I will have their link listed down below. My gifts come from the spirit. I encounter difficulties with resiliency. I live, I live my life to the fullest knowing that God always has my back. So your guides, look here. Your guides, your angels, talk to them. I also feel like this could be expressing yourself through journalism <laughs> and journalism. The reason why I came out like that, like not just writing, but also speaking it out, like literally talk to your guys, literally talk, speak it out, talk it out, ask questions because the answers will come. I'm going to pick a couple cards from my deck. Look at that, 411, divine insights. Your prophetic, intuitive, and psychic abilities are increasing now. All right, so someone could have the ability to tap into higher realms, to bring information into this 3D reality, into matter. Um, and I feel like someone, that they could be a channeler, they could be channeling, messages from angels to help heal other people they could have the gift of healing here with the three of swords in the reverse i feel like someone definitely has the gift of healing be true to you so sometimes you know healers actually most of the time healers have went through some form of initiation that was very painful so that way they can empathize with other people both like them and unlike them so the spirit operates in many different realms in many different ways. And it's not to hold ourselves bound to human understanding. Look at this. Look at the bounding, the binding on there. It's like bind, they're bound to some type of understanding of how love works. And you are called to free yourself from that. So that could be both the healer and also other people that are watching this message. The high priestess looks at things from a higher standpoint, a higher viewpoint. Another thing about this binding is that whether you talk to angels or you speak in tongues, that's another um, spiritual gift, that 
you have the power to bind negative energy. I did a video on casting and I briefly spoke about that. It was a podcast, but I posted it here about binding and casting, casting, casting spells pretty much like it from the Bible. And most people won't put that link together because of the conditioning from the middle ages, but that is a technique that you can use to help bind this negative energy. Um, think about these three different swords. This could be words that have penetrated the heart space. You see the blood at the very end, very painful. And you're able to take it and bind it up and bind it up in love. One, air energy, unity, mentality, knowledge, collective consciousness. I feel like this is definitely someone that is working. I hear from the mastermind. Their mastermind, that is a, that term mastermind comes from, um, it comes from an esoteric principle, but it also is used in like business realms, um, especially, specifically dealing with spiritual businesses and people that operate in that type of realm where you would have a mastermind. So you could have a mastermind of physical humans that you look up to that give you advice, but this is talking about your mastermind on the spiritual realms. Sitting at a council of angels, of guys, could even be your ancestors and receiving this information on how to move forward in life, especially here with the 411. So what's the 411? You go to your angels, you go to your guides, and they will deliver this message to you. So instead of worrying about stuff, take it to your guides, lay it down before them like an offering. Think about this is an offering, your pain, your hurt, and you lay it down at the feet of your, of your guides and say, can you transmute this? Can you take this pain and turn it into joy? All right. So make sure you do check out the description box. If you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe bell and the notification bell and all that good stuff like that. And I will catch you later. Peace. Okay, option B, creative writing. We have here, I hear the black void going into that creative space and pulling out information. Dark matter, dark matter is programmable energy. It is the beginning and the end. It's the alpha and the omega. All right, Archangel Gabriel, make time to write down your thoughts in a journal or pen an article or book. So someone could have the gift of writing. They could have a book or a blog or something within them that they're supposed to create. But overall, your pal is about expressing yourself. Support. You are supported. Trust. Okay, we have a theme going on here. I feel like someone may not trust their inner voice or they may not trust the things that they have to share with the world. And you're going to be opened up over this next six months. So from this eclipse to the next eclipse or six months from now, that you're going to start to open up and being able to express yourself and trust that inner guidance, that inner GPS. Trust your feelings and dreams to guide your career path. Even if you already are happy and satisfied with your career, that you could be going to a, another level in your career, or you could be finding your true soul's passion. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. That's so funny because we have, I mean, it's a new moon, but you know, it's in Gemini. I hear double standards. Um, uh, so someone could be like almost teeter-tottering, like not really sure about what to make a decision about, not really sure about what path to go down. Um, but they also could be one of those type of people or in the understanding, you could be dealing with this person, this could be you, where you, it's not like you're trying to be two-faced. It's like you can see things from two different angles. You can, you could be caught in the middle of a crossfire. This could be internally, or either this could be externally as there could be two different parties. And you you kind of, you kind of see both people's point of view or both groups point of view. But um, you have to find your, your way out of that situation. <laughs> so for some, this may be an inward battle. And you're going to find your way. Um, as we turn this upright with the sun, you're going to find your way through this situation to your personal truth. For others, if this is an external situation and you're caught 
in the crossfire of two different groups that you're going to have to navigate your way out of that. I'm going to keep this upright. And we have the Ace of Swords in the reverse, and then we have the Justice card. Um, so yeah, I feel like someone could be having a double standard. Um, they could be even confused. And helping to clarify a lot of that, I hear pros pros prosperity. Not, it's not prosperity. It was like a, it was like a, a word that I never really heard before. Um, it's a word. It's like someone making their own way through. Maybe prosperity. It's not prosperity. Um, prost prosperous, like prostating. That's that. There we go. I, it's like a prostrating, like going into prayer and going into this mode of uh, maybe automatic writing and channeling and writing it down here with the pen. This is almost like a pen. This is like a channel of clarity coming through. Look at her mind right here. We have her and we have the mind. She's blindfolded. So this could be someone that is literally going into a, a trans and downloading information. Like that clarity that's coming through. I count my blessings daily and give thanks to God for the miracles within my life. Someone could not be grateful about the blessings that they have in their life. And then they're going to have an epiphany like, oh, wow, I'm really, really blessed. I'm highly favored. And for this person that may be channeling this information, it may seem weird at first. You may even have dreams. You should write them down. It may be like it's somebody that's going through a rebirth for sure because it's like trust and support, then downloads. And then we have here justice, like balancing it all out, trying to weigh out the pros, the cons, trying to weigh out what is true and what is not true. Some of it is symbolic and some of it is literal. And you have to come to that conclusion. Some things you have to let go. Here we go. 69 evolution, DNA activations, generational change, equality, and fairness. Look at that. Does not, not go with that card right there with justice, fairness, but also DNA activations as you're going through a rebirth. I was saying that. And the sun, the DNA, DNA um, codes, um, maybe stargazing or sun gazing is one thing that can help bring some clarity for some. Once again, this is general, so it may not apply to everyone. 613, divine wisdom. Look at that. You have wisdom coming through. You're being given the keys to divine knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you are knowledgeable, but you're going through another rebirth. That's another thing about, about with this type of energy that I see is like a person that can see a multiplicity of realities or truths and they find themselves having to sift through or maybe even being becoming confused because they see things from such a higher plane. I remember how I was telling you like they see from a higher plane and they're looking down on reality and they can see so many different outcomes, so many different ways of thinking that it can become skewed, especially right now. I, I think what's going to happen is that going through this activation cycle and going through, I call it like the God perspective or the eagle's eye, where you can look down on humanity or look down on reality itself. And you can see so many different possibilities, infinite possibilities. And through this whole cycle that you're going to come to some type of clarity for you and you're going to become I hear, I heard Maiden, um, give me a second. It was something that came like really, really quickly like that. Maiden, um, a maiden, but it's like going through maybe like a crone from maiden to crone, like from being very infantile, being very joyous as we have, we do have the sun in Gemini, but we have Gemini. It could be sort of like kitty, like play, like play, playful, like um, maybe even indecisive. Like then you have the sun that also deals with playful type of energy. But going from like that youngster type of energy, that um, indecisive, confused. But that confusion is actually good in your situation. It may be difficult in the world, but 
through this rebirth, you're going to understand that it was all for your higher good, though, and for those that are coming towards you. And so what's, what's going to happen going from maiden to like that crone, that crone is like she's crowned with wisdom. She she sees things on a higher plane. Her Her carnal eyes are closed. So she doesn't look at people's physical circumstance. She looks at the spirit and the energy that they have and come to a clear understanding of who they really are and what the situation really needs. This person or, you know, it's different people. I hear reckoning um, that they have a multiplicity of perspectives, but in each person's situation, they're able to bring clarity to their situation. So this is a leader. Um, give me a second. Yeah, it's a leader. We have the sun card. We have support. We have all of this seems like a leader, a leader and a person that can almost like, you know, this is or this is a better way how to explain it. OK, so King Solomon, King Solomon was a judge, uh, the king of Israel, and he was so wise, known for his wisdom. People would come from afar to sit under his counsel, to hear his wisdom. And he knew how to, through his gift of wisdom, come to the righteous understanding of a person's situation. You can read you can read in the Old Testament about like some of the stories and parables and stuff. But this is that type of person that a human will look at like a human judge, a human person will look at a situation, be like with a gavel, like, oh, guilty, guilty, innocent, whatever. But this person looks at it from a God perspective, the eagle's eye. And when they look at things, they look at things with a spiritual eye, an energetic eye, and they're able to righteously make a decision. Okay. So it's not about human understanding. So this is what the, these people, they're battling against their spiritual understanding and the carnal understanding. And they're going teeter-tottering in between until they come to a, a decision. So over the next six months, I hear eight, eight, nine, nine months, that you're going to come to some type of clear decision in your decision making. <laughs> um, this gift is going to build and build and build. We have all this wisdom here. You definitely have to keep tablets, I hear. Um, so someone may actually have a book, like a, a diary, and they may um, scry in it, scribe into it. They may do different techniques to receive these visions and come to a, a type of understanding of their personal journey and how to weigh out situations. Someone could be a literal judge or a lawyer. And now they're going to, they're, they're battling in between. It's almost like an arena and they're being held on trial, but it's a spiritual arena and their guides are going to come and help them with this gift because you can have people that may go to school for something, but they may not have that gift. So this person, this is another situation, may have went to school for something but now they're getting the anointing from the spiritual realms that's going to put them on a whole nother paradigm. So they're able to maybe go, if they're a nurse or something, they can go into a hospital and the doctor may say, this is that. And that's the diagnosis according to the paper, according to research. But this person with their spiritual eye can pinpoint where that pain is coming from. They can pinpoint on an energetic and spiritual level that no, this person actually needs this. They may even start the, their whole, their their own holistic practice, possibly. Um, and that could be from someone that's a nurse or a doctor all the way to someone that may be a lawyer. It's something that deals with judgment. You know, with a, a nurse and, and a doctor, you have to make a judgment call on what the disease is, where it may have came from, how to diagnose it, how to treat it. And that's the same thing, you know, sort of kind of with like a judge or a lawyer. They have to sort of kind of, you know, gauge if a person's telling the truth and how to handle the situation According to, I hear like high school, someone could be a high school teacher that's starting to work with children. And it's almost like that adolescence age where they're still a child, but they're also like a teen moving into adulthood. And they have that specialty with them that they can hone in and help 
these group of kids. It could be a group home too. So um, I also have to say this, that sometimes when messages come through, it may not, it's no time frame. I may open myself up to messages that may take a couple years to unfold. But the clarity overall will start to unfold over the next um, nine months. Okay. So anyways, you guys, make sure you check out the description box and um, share if you want to join the ministry over here. Subscribe to the notification bell and I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace. Okay. Option C, we have here Archangel Gabriel. Nurture. As you nurture a child, you're nurture, you nurture your own inner child. Both activities are important for you right now. As these cards were coming out when I was doing the cards, parental care, it's all about children, whether you have children, you're going to have children, or of course, we all were children, a child at one, at one point. Options, consider your career possibilities that are open to you. It may have something to do with child care, or it may have something to do with the home inner child work or you as a child therapist and that can be a spectrum of things that can be you working with adults that may have childlike behaviors immature or either they may have some type of disorder that they have to that they are sort of childlike but we will see your dreams need a practical plan full moon in taurus the chariot cancer it deals with the home it deals with the mother and being nurtured and these two cards came out both for you. We have the Daughter of Wands in the reverse, and then we have the Four of Wands upright. Yeah, I feel like this definitely deals with something with the heart space. Nurture also feel like finances. As we have the Ace of Pentacles here. All right, both of these cards came from my um, two different soul sisters. I will have their links listed down below. Stability. This card reads, divine love heals, guides, and leads me. Spirit speaks to me and through me for the highest good of all. A voice for the victims, I hear. So some people may be getting into some type of health care or some type of nurturing of children or the inner child. The law of abundance and just ask okay so i feel like that is two different individuals the law of abundance for those that may be concerned about finances that you have to go back through and review what's going on in the home okay review your behavior surrounding abundance as we have here the home chariot you know, deals with the whole realms of the home as far as looking at it, dealing with the house um, of, of, of like cancer and the realms of the home, the nurturing, how you look at money. How do you look at finances? How do you look at abundance? Do you think it is something that is obtainable for you, that you deserve it? I feel like this is going to deal with the psychological understanding of abundance and of deservingness and worthiness. That you have to go back and review that and maybe journaling will help you. Maybe even going back to review some things that you learned in childhood and reprogram that. Give me give me a second. Prosperity. Someone could be receiving a um, I hear a paycheck. It could have been waiting for some type of money to come through and it is lagging. Maybe it was slow. Maybe you have some unexpected money that's coming through. And with this card is really saying, make sure you take your time and think about how you're going to invest this money because there could be an opportunity for it to expand. I specifically heard the word expand the money, which just means like multiply it. <laughs> okay, let me put this right there. This could be something playing out in um, like the fourth house. It could be something that is playing out during cancer season. For someone now another message that came through just ask and it will be given unto you yeah with the law of abundance here okay so someone is afraid of asking maybe someone does owe you some money 
um, that could be one thing. But I really feel like on a higher level, that someone is afraid to ask God, the divine, the all for what they really want. If you do not ask, you will not receive, okay? You have to open up your mouth and ask. Literally, ask and believe. It will be given unto you. Just ask. And with this, dreams need a, a practical plan and parental care that may be restructuring the home with the four of wands here. Restructuring the home surrounding children. You know, children have been online for quite some time and that could be a little frustrating for some parents um, as you have to entertain your children pretty much 24 hours a day and taking up extra responsibilities with having to teach them both you know just the regular stuff of life but also taking on another hat to be the teacher the full-time teacher and that could have been very cumbersome for some people um, another thing too, they're about to be out of school for the summer and that could be another layer of worry for other people. Going back to the drawing board and really planning and structuring out your day will yield a great outcome for all parties. I also feel like this is a time for pampering and allowing yourself to, to be pampered and allowing yourself to receive instead of always giving, especially if you're a parent. Here, you have six. And this is the, the number for health, making sure that you are taking care of your health first of all, nurturing yourself, making sure that you're taking time for yourself. Guard your temple, the temple. Mm -hmm. Definitely making sure that you're taking care of your health. All these cards right here, um, and then with parental care is, is telling me about your health, making sure that your health is well taken care of. Maybe check with to see what's in your um, sixth house or what's going on there, what type of activity you may be spending over the next couple of months. Um, to make sure that you get that taken care of beforehand. Or if it is something that you feel like you need to be, you know, um, taking a closer look at for your health. Now is the time to, you know, to push that to the forefront. Others may be concerned about their own parents. Some may have to take on the responsibility of taking care of their parents. And that can be another layer of worry that is coming through. But taking a practical approach to things, maybe even asking for help, afraid to ask people for help. You could be the person that needs help. Um... You could be the person that maybe is the the parent and needs help and afraid to ask for help. Or you could be the one that is the child and caring for your elderly parent or sibling or older sibling um, or taking care of your children. And you may need some help and you're just like, I don't know who to ask. I don't know where to go. But first pray on it. And as you ask, you will receive some form of guidance you receive the help that you need this is almost like a helping hand a golden opportunity that's coming through 411 this came out in in pal a about divine insights and psychic abilities and communicating with your ancestors that's one thing that could be coming to the forefront communicating with your ancestors your angels and really receiving that advice that you need from the higher realms it's also, it also screams like spirituality and getting a strong spiritual practice into play that will help organize things for you. I see like these blocks, almost like Tetris, I think that's what they call it, or Minecraft, I don't know. Anyway, it was a game where they have blocks and you had to fit the blocks in together. And once they click together and then it will like um, disappear, the problem would disappear. So I say that to say that these little blocks they're all like challenges or obstacles that once you figure out an answer to it and it clicks together, that it will start to disappear. It will move out of the way so you can go on to the next level of life. Consider your options. There are options about your specific situation that you may not think you have answers to, but if you really sat down, prayed about it and took the time, this is also time, both of these time, to really think about it, that you will have an answer. 
and back that up with action that things will work out for your highest good. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Yeah, so I feel like that could be everything for you. So if you could, so please give the video a like and leave a comment. Make sure you do subscribe and hit the notification bell and check the description box for more information. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.